Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer believes if the club can win trophies, it will convince Paul Popper to stay. He said Paul Popper has got a very good attitude. Now, we haven't won a trophy since 2017. So we haven't won a trophy now for almost four years. And we've not won a trophy yet under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. Now, Paul Pogba has had a long-running transfer saga. He's been heavily linked with a return to Juventus. Obviously, swap deals have been high on the agenda. Paul Pogba did endure four good years with Juventus before he rejoined Manchester United. Real Madrid, they've been relentlessly linked with him. Don't forget, earlier on in the season, Paul Pogba made an admission saying that one day his dream is to join Real Madrid. PSG, Barcelona, Inter Milan have been in for him before. He said the other week that we'd lowered our asking price for Paul Pogba. He said we will accept as low as £50 million. Now, Minio Riola, who is Paul Pogba's agent, he told to us Sport a few weeks ago that Paul Pogba's career at Manchester United is over. He said he's unhappy and he has to leave. And he did mention that he's got no intentions of signing a new contract. And then obviously Minio Riola made a fresh statement saying that it's unlikely Paul Popper will leave in January and he said he can leave next summer. Solskjaer was reportedly furious with Minio Riola's announcement because it was just before the game against RB Leipzig. But don't forget the other week, Paul Pogba spoke about his future for the first time since Minio Riola's comments and he said that he's always fought and he will always fight for Manchester United, for my teammates and the fans and Pogba did confirm that he's 1000% involved in our project. <clears throat> This is his fifth season at the football club since he rejoined. He's made over 100 appearances in all competitions. He's won two major honours, that's the Europa League and the EFL Cup. Um, he did enjoy a difficult time under the Jose Mourinho era, but so too did all our top players. We had Pogba when he was a lot younger under the Sir Alex Ferguson era, but we had to let him go due to limited appearances. He's our most expensive signing at the moment because we paid £89 million for him. Analysing the vast majority of Paul Pogba's career since he rejoined, he has been inconsistent. But to his credit, he has done very, very well recently. Now, he didn't play any part against Leeds. He did very well against Sheffield United, made some good touches and played a part in one of the goals. Um, put a good performance out against City the other week, even though it ended nil-nil. He made an impact when he came on against RB Leipzig. He did very well against West Ham, got his name on the score sheet. That game against West Ham earlier on in the season was his first start in the Premier League for over a month. Don't forget Paul Pogba had an ankle injury earlier on this season. Ollie confirmed that, that that ankle injury was totally comparison to the one that he had last season. He was out for the vast majority of last season. Don't forget earlier on this season we triggered that one year extension on his contract. So he's under contract on Man United until June 2022. During the last international break, like I've updated you so many times, 
Don't forget, Paul probably made a few comments saying like this season has been the most difficult period in his career. And he says like playing for France is a breath of fresh air. And in general, he was talking about his Man United struggles this season, but reflects on them comments, he did receive a lot of criticism, did Paul Pogba. But this, despite what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer said, um, there's still a lot of United fans that are expecting him to leave the football club next summer. So that is the breaking news on him. Now I want to delve into some more news on Moises Casido. So Fabrizio Romano has come out and said that Manchester United are in direct contact with the agents of Moises Casido. The agreement on personal terms, five years won't be a problem. He says, MUFC control the situation by weeks and will decide soon whether to complete the deal or not. So, uh, looking likely, Moises Casido is going to be our first signing of the January transfer window. Dairo Extra, which is an Ecuadorian, Ecuadorian outlet, they've said Man United have been in advanced talks with Independiente del Val and we have outbid AC Milan and RB Leipzig now I think we're going to get Moises Casido for around 4.5 million and like I've said he's going to sign is it a five year contract Independiente del Val valued him at around 5.5 million with add-ons included and it said they would demand around a 20% sell-on clause. Moises Casido is a defensive midfielder and it is the age of 19. Now I want to give you some news on David Alaba from Bayern Munich. So, Man United have stepped up their interest in David Alaba. This is stemming from the AS, which is a Spanish outlet. Uh, there was reports coming out yesterday saying that Manchester United have made a formal offer for the player. Uh, so too of Manchester City, they've made a formal offer. It says that Chelsea are interested in him. I think Real Madrid are also interested and so too are Barcelona. Now, Karl Heinz Rummenig, who is Bayern Munich's CEO, he appears, he appears to accept that David Alaba will be leaving on a three transfer. Alaba is into the final six months of his contract. Now, Bayern Munich have been trying to get him a new contract. They've tried to give him a pay rise of around £200,000 a week, but he has refused this. Alaba's on around £150,000 a week at the moment. Alaba has been at Bayern Munich now for a long time. He's made over 400 appearances for them in all competitions and he's won around 20 major honours. And he's Austrian Footballer of the Year. Don't forget he had a loan spell with Hoffenheim. And before he was at Bayern Munich, he was at Austria Vienna. He is the age of 28. He's predominantly a centre-half or a left-back. But before, he's been deployed as a central midfielder. And he's played on the left wing. And he's also played on the right wing. So would you take David Alaba at Manchester United. But yeah, there has been a hell of a lot of players on our agenda. It is good that we are making plans for next year. 
we've already revealed our transfer plans. We are looking to strengthen up in four positions. Now, we're looking to get a right winner in, a central midfielder, a not a central midfielder, sorry, a right winner, a holding midfielder, a centre half, and a right back. Ed Woodward has actually changed our transfer strategy to help Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now, I was reading up yesterday saying that we could raise over £30 million in January player sales. And I think the players that we're going to get rid of next year is Jesse Lingard. I think we're also going to get rid of Phil Jones. We're going to get rid of Marcus Rojo. I think we'll also offload Sergio Romero because Sergio Romero is now our third choice goalkeeper. I think uh, Megalo will leave in January when his loan expires. Uh, possibly Eric Bay could leave the club because Bay seldom plays now and he's injury prone, but he's actually a good centre half. Uh, there's reports saying that Timothy Foster Mensah could also leave the club. Possibly Matic could leave next year. Uh, he's too inconsistent. You know, possibly Juan Mata could leave the club next year. Uh, there has been rumours of Daniel James possibly leaving. Uh, there's been rumours of Brandon Williams going out on loan because Brandon Williams is now our third choice left back following the arrival of Alex Tellez. And earlier on this season, there was rumours of Dean Henderson going out on loan. The January transfer window will be Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's fifth transfer window as Manchester United manager. So far, he's enjoyed four transfer windows at the club and he's spent over £200 million. In the summer of 2019, he brought Daniel James and wan Bissaka and Harry Maguire in. In January, he brought Bruno Fernandes in and Odi Nagala in on loan. And in the summer transfer window of this year, he brought Donny van der Beek in, Alex Tellez, Edison Cavani, Facundo Palistri, and Ahmad Dilo Traore. Traore should be joining the football club in January. Ollie's brought quite a few young players into the club as well, so I've got to give him a lot of credit for that. Just hopefully next year, Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer gets the backing that he deserves because during the summer transfer window, he wasn't backed enough by our board. During the summer transfer window, we missed out on all of his priority targets. And I've been saying to you, haven't I, like Solskjaer has been facing the same problem what Mourinho was facing. Because Mourinho did make it clear to our board in the summer of 2018 that he wanted a centre-half in and he obviously never got that centre-half in. But Ed Woodward has come out several times to support Solskjaer and he's fully committed to him despite us having a poor start to the season and despite us getting knocked out of the Champions League. You know... But uh, the board haven't backed any of the managers that we've had since Ferguson left. And this is one of the main reasons why the board has been one of the biggest problems at the club for several years. We have been in a very good vein of form recently. I think we've won six of our last seven league games. We've done very well away from home. When we beat Sheffield United last Thursday, we became the first team. to win six successive away games after conceding first in a single Premier League season. And we've won our last ten away games in a row in the Premier League. Uh, we are now sitting, what, third in the Premier League and plus we have got a game in hand. So, flexing our good vein of form, pressure has obviously eased off Ole Gunnar Solskjaer 
Solskjaer will definitely still be Man United manager in the new year. Uh, could still be Man United manager at the end of this season. Depends on how things go from now till the end of this season. Now, obviously, there's there's quite a few Man United fans' perceptions that are now changing regarding Solskjaer. And they're now saying that he is the right manager. But obviously, before, there was demanding Oli out of the football club. And I presume maybe there's still some Man United fans that think he isn't the right manager for Man United. But I hope he can succeed because I like Ole Gunnar Solskjaer a lot. And, you know, his priority is leading the club to long-term success. You know, Solskjaer's been in charge of Manchester United now for just over two years. <laughs> uh, it was his two-year anniversary not so long ago. He's managed over 100 games for us in all competitions. Um, he's got a contract on Man United until 2022. And Solskjaer said a few times this season that Manchester United can win the Premier League. I'm very sceptical that will happen. I'm not going to fully disregard it though. I think maybe next season we could win it or maybe the season after. You know, Solskjaer did say after our 6-2 win against Leeds that you can't talk about a title bid until March. But we are certainly in there with a shout and I think 21 is definitely coming like I mentioned the other day. You know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013 so we haven't won it now for around 8 years. We are the most successful team. In um, England when it comes to titles. Because obviously we've won 20 titles. And 13 of them are Premier League titles. But uh, Roy Keane's actually recently said that Man United can. You know challenge Liverpool for the title. Like I've updated you on already. He says over the past few months we've obviously been criticised. Particularly over our home record. And Roy Keane himself criticised our defenders and our goalkeeper. But I think. Definitely our squad is good enough for a top four, top three finish this season and it's definitely good enough to win a trophy. By the way, Solskjaer says our players are desperate to learn how to win trophies. But we finish in the top four, top three this season win a trophy. I think that would represent a very good season for Man United then. That would give us something to build on. You know, Solskjaer has been under pressure at the football club quite a few times and reflects on that. There has been talks of Mauricio Pochettino coming in. There's been talks of, you know, Julian Nagelsmann coming in, uh, Masmiliano Ligre. He's been on our agenda a few times. Um, reports from Germany said uh, quite a few weeks ago that we could make a move for Thomas Tuchel if we finish Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. So, yeah. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, like I've said so many times, he is out of his depth at the football club. Um, I said to you, his decision making does concern me because in a lot in a lot of his games, in a lot of in a lot of the games he's managed at Manchester United. He has got it wrong and obviously that's cost us games. But there's been some games where his decision making has been correct. You know, Man United is the third club in Solskjaer's managerial career. You know, obviously hasn't got a proven pedigree behind him. But obviously with Flex and how long he's been at Man United now, he's learned quite a bit in that. And he's gained uh, some managerial experience. He did well in his first full season last season because he got us qualification for the Champions League, got us third place, second nice with finishing to Ferguson era and he also got us to three semi-finals. 
and um, our record against the top six sides was good, um, especially last season. You know, Solskjaer's beaten Pep Guardiola three times as Man United manager. He's beaten Frank Lampard three times as Man United manager. He's beaten Jose Mourinho once as Man United manager. He's beaten Thomas Tuchel twice as Man United manager. He's beaten Julian Nagelsmann once. He's obviously beaten Brendan Rodgers. Who else has he beaten? Oh, yeah, he's beaten Marcelo Bielsa now. So, credit Solskjaer for that. Uh, we have seen a lot of players depart the club as well since he got recommended in. So, yeah. There is good players at Manchester United, like I've already said to you. Um, Bruno Fernandes, he is our best player and he's the best signing that we have made since uh, Sir Alex Ferguson era because... Bruno Fernandes has made the difference in this team. Um, he scored a lot of goals. Okay, a lot of his goals have come from the penalty spot. Um, he's provided assists. I think he's created more chances than any other player in the Premier League this season. He's been at the club now for almost a year. He won Player of the Month for November, did Fernandes. He's won Player of the Month quite a few times, reflecting on his good performances. We paid £47 million for him from Sport in Lisbon back in January. Bruno Fernandes. Uh, predominantly plays in that number 10. He recently scored two goals against Leeds and also got an assist. Um, I think Donny van der Beek um, is good and he's impressed me in the games he's played in this season. He's only made two starts in the league though. That obviously came against... West Ham, and he obviously started against Southampton. That was his full Premier League debut for the club. Donny van der Beek did score on his Premier League debut in the opening day defeat to Crystal Palace. Van der Beek looks more effective in a deeper role, doesn't he? But he can play in like three different roles. We got him in a deal worth £40 million from Ajax. I think also Marcus Rashford is very, very good. Uh, Marcus Rashford was actually unlucky not to score against Leeds. But uh, Rashford, aspects of his game have improved. You know, his finishing's improved. He gets good runs in behind. He scores goals. I just think we need to keep Marcus Rashford out wide because that's where he's more effective. We have played him centrally a few times. Uh, Marcus Rashford has been part of the club for several years. Uh, Got to give Martial a lot of credit. I think he's done well recently. In the last two league games, he's done well. Um, he's got two assists against Leeds. Obviously won the penalty. Had a couple of chances as well that he should have converted. Um, he did well in the Sheffield game. Got his name on the score sheet. But the vast majority of this season, though, Martial hasn't been that good. He hasn't been that good. Because he hasn't been clinical enough. But last season he was good. I think he scored like 23 goals in 48 games. He did um, well in his debut season under Louis van Gaal as well. I think he scored 17 goals that season. Something like that. Martial's been at United now for around 5 years. Or just over 5 years. Solskjaer was the one that gave him that number 9 shirt. Edison Cavani, he's also impressed me. He's enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. I said when we got Edison Cavani, and he will be in that Slatan Ibrahimovic, and he's proving that. Uh, Cavani's just recently come back from injury. Don't forget, he's been charged by the FA for misconduct for the racist comment he put on social media last month. And he's got until January the 4th to respond to these charges. And if he's found guilty, could face a free match ban. Or should I say, will face a free match ban minimum. But Edison Cavani apologised anyway for what he did because Solskjaer confirmed that. Um, I think Mason Greenwood's a good player. He's done well recently. Um, didn't play, obviously, any part against Leeds. Mason Greenwood. 
Don't forget Greenwood has had personal issues this season, had injuries and obviously was out with illness at one point. But Ollie's been defending him a lot this season. This is his second season in our senior squad. The start of this season we gave Greenwood that number 11 shirt. I think Juan Mata's uh, good and he's enjoyed a very good career at Manchester United as Juan Mata. You know, Juan Mata's uh, been at United now for over six years. He's made over 200 appearances in all competitions and he's scored 50 goals for Man United. Got him for like 37.1 million from Chelsea back in 2014. With add-ons included, it was like 40 million. But uh, Juan Mata, you can say now, has lost that yard of pace because he's now, what, 33, 34 years of age. Earlier on this season, he rejected an 18 million... 18 million a year contract offer to play in Saudi Arabia. I think um, Fred um, is a good player and he's enjoyed a good season. He's been very consistent in a lot of games. There's been a couple of games where he has looked off the pace. But I like the way Fred's attacked. He's broke up the play well. At times he's dictated the play. Fred's been at the club now a couple, couple of years. We paid £47 million for him from Shakhtar Donetsk. Uh, like I said, I've been impressed with Paul Pobba recently. Uh, I think Luke Shaw's good. My only element of concern about Luke Shaw is that he is injury prone. He initially had a hamstring injury and then recovered from it and now he's out injured again because he came off injured in the 6-2 win against Leeds. Luke Shaw's enjoyed a good six years or so at the club. Paid £30 million for him from Southampton back in 2014. But Tommy Moore, I think he's been good in games, um, especially the Leeds game. Obviously, scored two goals and got an assist. Got the man the match. Well, it was 2-0 up in the first three minutes, by the way. But Tom has been at Man United now for a long time. Was it just after the first lockdown he signed a five-year contract with Man United? Alex Tellez, I think he's enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career as well. Uh, got him in a deal worth £15.4 million from Porto on deadline day, like I mentioned. The only bad game Tellez has enjoyed at the moment was a 3-2 loss to RB Leipzig. Um, I think Harry Maguire, he's been good in games this season where he's been very effective in the air and he showed that ability to play out from the back. But there's also been games where he has been poor, where he's looked too exposed, he's made too many mistakes. He's not world-class, Harry Maguire, and he's certainly... Wasn't worth the £80 million pounds that we got him for. He's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment. And he's our current captain. Uh, Victor Lindelof, I think, you know, he's done good recently. He certainly isn't world-class and he's certainly not on Harry Maguire's level, Victor Lindelof. You know, Victor Lindelof did get his name on the score sheet against Leeds, surprisingly, came from the set-piece. You know, Lindelof's enjoyed a good three years or so now. At the football club. We got him in a deal worth £31 million from Benfica. And Wan Bissaka, you know, I think he's enjoyed very good games this season. Where he's got into good positions and he's put good crosses into the box. He scored his first goal for Man United in our 4-1 win against Newcastle earlier on in the season. But we have got concerns about Anne Wan Bissaka's lack of attacking intent and his distribution. You know, David De Gea, he's also impressed me in games this season where he has made fantastic saves. He has, he's obviously made mistakes as well. He's been making mistakes in the last few years. He has been games where he hasn't had much to do, though. This is David De Gea's 10th season at Man United, so he has been a long servant and he's made over 500 appearances for the club in all competitions. Um, he will remain our number one for this present time. 
probably will remain our number one for the rest of this season. But there has been a lot of Man United fans that are saying we should now put Dean Henderson as number one. So there you go. So, yeah, we have got a big game tonight against Everton in the Carabao Cup quarter-final. It's a must-win game for Man United. Uh, like I said to you yesterday, Everton and Leicester are two big tests for Ole. So, anyway, guys, that's everything to update today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.